Vicky and Annette, mum and daughter here from Minerva and we're back again this month with another sewing Q&A video. So thank you so much as always to everyone that leaves a comment with a question uh, or email, emails us in with them. Um, it, we've loads of questions to answer and we've got another six today to hopefully help you on your sewing journeys and um, yeah, hopefully it'll be helpful to lots of people. Um, so before we get stuck into the questions, shall we mention what we're wearing? Well, yep. I think I had this on last month. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah. Um, that was okay. <laughs> I, I didn't realise, but um, the pattern you is... You do wear um, this dress a lot, Mum, don't you? <laughs> I do, yeah. Yeah, I do. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> um, it's a simple sew pattern. I made it originally um, for when I was going on holiday. Um, so it's just a fraction below knee length. Yeah. Um, it's called the cocoon dress. Um, and it is very much a cocoon yeah. shape. You love a cocoon style, I do, I you? do, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, it has pockets in the side seam, but I'm not a lover of them. Um, I just don't like how they flop about. <laughs> um, so I put slanted patch pockets on. Mm. I really um, like that though. I think it I suits do, the dress. Yeah, I do, yeah. Um, just because they're there at the front, I love yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was such a, a simple last minute make for a holiday. Right. <laughs> and I've took it on every holiday since. Yeah. Um, well, fabric as well. So it's we're both wearing Minerva exclusive loop back French terry fabrics. Yeah. Um, yours is the scattered fronds print, isn't yeah. it? I really yeah. think you suit that print. I think it looks lovely, yeah. And mine is the toucan clay. <laughs> I love the name of this print. It's got little toucans in the design, hasn't it? Yeah. Um, so yeah, my pattern is the Megan Nielsen Jara sweater. So I've got like a little, the funnel neck option. Um, it is sort of full sleeves, but I always, I always oh, wear it rolled yeah. up. And then I went for the option that has um, like a slightly lower um, back than it does at the front. It's yeah. like a curved hemline. Um, but I definitely did add to the length because I, I always like... Just a little bit more length, yeah, yeah, yeah. I um, like them longer, but yeah, it's rather a, than shorter. Yeah, it's it's just it's a lovely fabric to wear this time mm. of year, though, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I I made this last year, probably over a year ago now, I think. And I mean, I I wear it all the time. I wash it all the time, and the fabric is still like brand new, isn't it? Yeah. Um. Yeah. So yeah. So um. Yeah. Really a uh, lovely mix to this month. So um. Should we get straight into the questions yeah. then? Yeah. So the first one is uh, from Andrea. And Andrea says, what are your top tips for buying fabric online? So I think that's a really good question. Mm -hmm. um, at Minerva, we only sell online these days. Um, and yeah, I mean, we fully appreciate and get that it can be difficult to sort yeah. to, sorry, to, to know what a fabric is going to be like when you're just looking at it as, on a screen. You know, it's sort of like when we both first started sewing, you know, we... Well, the, the internet didn't exist back then, did it? And, you know, you certainly, you would feel... Not when I first started sewing, it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, even, even when I first started, it didn't. Um, so, you know, you would feel a fabric in the flesh before, you know, before, and that would, you know, and yeah. tell you everything you needed, yeah. whether it was useful for your garment, wouldn't it? But there are so many advantages that to buying online. Part of the pleasure was going around a shop or a market stall and feeling everyone yeah, and yeah. you spent half an hour doing that before you even, even looked for yeah. what you <laughs> yeah. wanted yeah, yeah you absolutely. were looking at future projects yeah. just by feeling yeah. them yeah. and there is certainly still a joy to be had in doing that isn't there of course um but there are so many advantages to buying online and you know just simply the choice that's available online yeah. Um, yeah. you know i mean you know in our warehouse here at Minerva, I mean, we've just tens of thousands of fabric. It's beyond yeah. every what you could find yeah. in a shop, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but you know, in having a little bit of knowledge and know how in how to like sort of filter those down on a website and know what you're looking for for a particular style or pattern can really mm. help make sure you get the right the right pattern for the right fabric. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So, first of all, I would say, you know, if you're ever in doubt, we do offer a sample service. So our samples at Minerva are a, literally a 10 centimetre strip cut off the roll. So you get the full width of the fabric, whatever that might be, by a 10 centimetre strip. So it gives you a really good size piece. So you can really sort of assess the weight, the drape, the stretchiness, the print, the colours. You know, you, you can literally feel it in your hands before you buy um, and it's just a case of waiting you know a few days yeah you can even wash that sample, sample wash see it. how it washes yeah you know, absolutely yeah, yeah and you know that can be a whole part of the 
process and the fun car yeah. in yeah. ordering samples and you know it kind of teaches you about fabric as you go as well it does yeah it them. yeah and um, the other thing to mention as well for the uk it's only the uk at the moment but we do also offer a free returns um program here at minerva so you know if you do ever buy something from us and it's just not what you thought it was mm. going to be you know it happens doesn't it you know it's of not course. quite the weight or the color yeah you know we do our absolute best to get everything across online but you know especially when it comes to the exact shade or color it is yeah. near on impossible because everybody's <clears throat> computers are different yeah aren't they? Exactly, exactly what looks like a <clears throat> that navy a light navy yeah. on one computer might come across quite yeah. dark on another. And the other thing, the description of colours, it's so subjective, isn't it? Like you yeah. said navy then. It's like, well, yeah, but it, it, I did it's change also, it to light yeah. navy. Yeah, but it could also be a deep blue yeah. or a French navy. Yeah, you know, there's, probably there's, is French navy. <laughs> well, you know what I mean? Though, lots of people will call, especially like when you come to like turquoises and things like that. Yeah. You know, people's... Um, there's a bluey turquoise, a green, there's a greeny yeah. turquoise. And that's before you even get it on a yeah. computer. Isn't you know, it? When it, like we always say about black fabric, there's so many shades Blacks. of black yeah. fabric. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you think they don't all just match, do yeah. they? So, um, but yeah, back to the free return. So, if there's ever anything that arrives that's just not what you thought, or you change your mind, even on, you know, even fabric that's cut off the roll, you know, so long as it's returned to us, you know, in the same condition, of course, you can just return that for a complete refund, and it's completely free returns in the UK. So it won't cost you anything in postage. We cover. That. So it's, what do they have to do? And well, um, you get a free returns um like slip in the, in with, the with, on the email, yeah. and yeah. not in the parcel. It'll be attached to the email. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And just literally send that back to us, and you get a full refund. Um, you know, and if there's anything we can help you with, you know, we, you know, our customer services team here at Minerva, you know, are always on hand to be able to help you. You know, decide. You know, will a, a pattern be uh, sorry, a fabric be suitable for a pattern and that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. And um, the other thing I wanted to mention though, like we do all um get a lot of good feedback on all the videos of fabrics that we have on the Definitely, yeah. Yeah, it's I mean, something we started years ago now, isn't it? Yeah. Um and yeah, it it does take us an awful lot of time in house filming them all, but we think it's really important to have them on, you know, almost every fabric yeah. on the website because there's something about seeing somebody handle a piece of fabric that tells you so much more than just a static photograph, yeah, isn't absolutely, there? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, just being able to see the stretch, how it drapes and hangs in someone's hands it's almost like someone is doing the that you know the touching of the roll in a shop for you mm -hmm. and you can watch that process happening mm -hmm. so i think they're really valuable to look at and on any uh, fabric page on our website you know if you just scroll down you'll see videos um on those pages so they're always there as well and as well we do the thread match which yes. if, yeah. you know if you are actually buying the fabric and you think, well, will I have that thread? Yeah. You can get a thread match. That's so it. you know yeah. that that's going to be perfect. You know it's going to match, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we always match to Gutterman uh, Sew All Thread, which is great yeah. for every fabric. You know, it's fantastic thread, isn't it? Yeah. It's, we think the best thread on yeah. the market. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe, all right, you know, if you say you were buying this fabric, it's like, well, I know I've got black. But if you're, if you're you know, buying a bright pink or, you know, a shade of whatever fabric. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit more difficult to try and match that online, yeah. isn't it? So we Going do back that to the you. blue of whatever shade that is. <laughs> yeah. Um, how many blues are there? Oh, Just from yeah. royal blue set to dark down to a nearly black navy. Yeah. How many is there? Mm. And that's stones. before you get to pale blues, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah so, yeah, there's definitely the thread match there to help as well. Mm. Another thing to mention as well is the videos that... Um, myself and sometimes my mum uh, films as well um, where we'll you know often pair up fabrics and patterns together and you know very often mm. we sort of like hold the fabrics out in the video so you know like often when we do say a new launch of like Minerva exclusive fabrics or there's a new core range you know we'll focus in on a particular um, base cloth so yeah. you know it just being able to see someone sort of hold them mm. up and handle them you know show you how much they stretch how yeah. much they drape you can learn a lot from those sorts of videos yeah, can't you absolutely um and i think often being able to see patterns that are suitable for those fabrics as well you know it just gives you an idea on the sorts of styles yeah. what you want to be looking for in a pattern what you'd want to avoid in a pattern for that sort of fabric yeah. so hopefully that can be helpful as well that you can you know you can just then apply to other projects mm. going forward 
<coughs> uh, the other thing to mention is if you sign up to our newsletter, that's also a great, similar to the, the, the videos in a way, because we, we, a lot of our newsletters, we pair fabrics and patterns together, or we often share little tips, mm. Or we'll share, you know, like uh, information about maybe a new fabric we're launching. So there's all, there's loads of information to learn in those newsletters. You know, obviously we we often have sales and promotions and things like that. But you know, not every email is full of that no. stuff. You know, we really try to include lots of educational content, informative, in there. yeah, informative, yeah. helpful, and hopefully inspiring. Absolutely, inspiring yeah. information as well. Um, and I we, look forward to them every yeah, morning. Yeah, I mean, I know what's coming on them, obviously. And I still look forward to them, yeah. I think some, there's something about when it actually lands in my inbox. It's like, yeah, it's just look nice to see it, yeah. Um, and something to mention with that as well, you know, if you, we, we have different um, preference options with our newsletter as well. So you can opt in to just receive an email once a week. Mm. You can opt in to receive a few emails a week. Or you can opt in to receive one every day. So, you know, if you really don't want many emails, you can literally just click the preferences link at the bottom of the last email we sent you. And, and there you'll be able to choose, right, I only want a weekly yeah. email. Or if you, you know, you want loads of inspiration coming through, like, I mean, we certainly have it every day, yeah. don't we? Yeah. You can click daily. Or if you want somewhere in between, you know, you can opt for a few a week. So there is that option as well. So you don't need to worry about us bombarding you, you know, if you don't want uh, lots of emails. And the other one, which I think is a really important one, is, and, and it's quite unique to us at Minerva, is the Minerva website itself is like a social network, <laughs> spelt S-E-W. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's a place for sewists from, you know, all around the world to come together and share their passion and their hobby. And, you know, you can literally create a free profile in a couple of seconds. Um, and from there, you can then, you know, join the community. So you can follow your favourite makers. You can share your works in progress. You can share things you've made. You can ask people for tips and advice. Um, you know, you can plan your sewing project on there you can use it however you wish um but he, but from a from a fabric sort of information point of view what you can do is when you share just like say if my mum shared this what she's made she could tag the pattern tag the fabric to it and then when she posts that on Minerva her photos or video or just information about the project would actually show on this fabric <coughs> um, on this fabric's uh, page so it means if somebody's looking at that page, that fabric on Minerva, if you just scroll down, you can see all these amazing things that people in the community have made. So it's one, you can read upon their experience of sewing it. So, you know, was the fabric easy to sew? Has it washed well? Um, was it, you know, what sort of, um, you know, what was the inspiration for their make? What patterns did they use? You know, all that good information that's just really helpful for us. But also, you know, when people share photographs, you can see, you know, well, what's the scale of the print? How does it hang when made into a dress or whatever like that? Um, you know, and, and there's just, there's so much information that you mm -hmm. can absorb from looking at what other people have made and actually seeing a fabric made up into a yeah. garment. Yeah. Um, and there's just, yeah, there's so much to learn and absorb, but hopefully in a fun and friendly and friendly way, um, yeah, with those um, that content on the website. And then the other thing I just wanted to mention just slightly is um, a product that we will be launching very, very soon. If you were at our event, you might have seen like a sneak peek already. And it's basically, if you're interested in learning more about fabric, then it is a bumper guide basically to learn more about fabric. So when that launches, we will obviously, we'll, we'll do a full video about it and we'll be shouting from the rooftops about it here at Minerva. But yeah, I did just want to mention it, um, you know, to sort of look out for. Um, because yeah, if you're interested in learning about fabric, I mean, we, we think it's amazing, it's don't fabulous. we? We've been yeah. working on it for over a year. <coughs> All my fabric knowledge that I've built up over 25 years is in this is yeah. in this product. All your fabric knowledge from even longer than that is in this product, isn't it? So a lot longer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we've got that coming up as well. Just before you yeah. go on to the next question, I've just thought of something. During that conversation, then um, you mentioned sewist. Ah, uh, yeah. And I just have to say that quite a few years ago now, um, I saw something somewhere where um, a lady said, 
Where have they got this word from? Sewist. <laughs> You're a sewer, not a sewist. Well, some people don't like the word sewist, they do they? No. Yeah. But I think it's a combination of sewer and artist. Yeah. So yeah, that's, where that's it came my from, views it? on it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we both like the name. I mean, I must admit, I often, I often sort of say sewer. Yeah. Just because I think that's what I'm used to before the word sewist came along. Yeah. Um, but other people say seamstress, don't they? Dressmaker, a tailor. Yeah. Yeah. Let us know in the comments, actually, what's your go-to word? Yeah, so if you as... don't like the word, we hope we haven't offended you. <laughs> yeah. But the other thing but is... But let us know which word you do like. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it's spelled the same as sewer. Oh, sewer, yeah, yeah. I know, well, that's, again, why a lot of people don't, don't use the word like sewer, it, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So, but yeah, we, let us know We in are sewists, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, so, <laughs> I just thought I'd mention yeah. that. So, second question. So, this is from So Crafty. Um, and they ask, what's the best way to make spaghetti straps? I'm making a dress with them and I'm struggling turning the fabric through. So I think if you're not using some sort of tool or gadget to help you with this, then it can, I mean, it would be really difficult, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, um, I always used a knitting needle, a fine yeah. knitting needle. Yeah. And if that works for you, there is nothing to stop you carrying on using yeah, that Yeah, you already have one. Yeah. Um, if it was, you know, where you, you had to, uh, you know, sew up the long length and then sew along the short length at the top, and then that starts you, um, you know, pushing through with the knitting yeah. needle. Um, I found so many times that by the time you've pushed it through to the other end, mm -hmm. the point of the knitting needle is pointing, is going through. The yeah. point's going through the end. Yeah. And then you just can't get it anymore. Um, you could turn your needle round and, you, you know, but you've got the, like, little... Bobble bit, bobble end, bit yeah. at the end of knitting needles, and that always won't always go through a thin. Yeah, and well, like a so crafty is on about spaghetti straps here, so these are gonna in be particular. Thin, they? Yeah. yeah. Um, so we've got two products, and yeah, that we think are the best products on the market. Both a little bit different. Um, both good in their own right. Yeah, just a bit different. This is quite a common one. They've been around for a long while. It's called a loop turner, mm. and on this end, it has a latch hook. Yeah. So you will, once you've trimmed the edge of your um the fabric. Yeah. Yeah. Um you would bring this through, you would let the the uh, latch hook end um you know fix it onto the fabric, which mm -hmm. is quite easy. Um and then you would sort of shuffle the fabric round it so that this starts yeah. You, Where you can pull it through. Yeah, you give it like a little helping hand. A to little start, helping hand, yeah, and then yeah. just just pull yeah. it through, don't you? Yeah. Um, and that's a pretty good one. Yeah. Um, this is pretty new to me. See, I, I do I have, have this at home. And do I love you? It. Now yeah. I've never used it. I, I have one ready to use as and when, but I've not made anything where where it's needed straps. So for spaghetti straps, you would use yeah. and this, this is thinnest called, one. It's the turning set by yeah. Prim, yeah. which we have here in the Nerva. Yeah, and with this one, whereas with that one, you can sew along the long edge and you can leave the end. Mm -hmm. You don't have to sew it. With this one, you have to sew across one end. Yeah, ideally, yeah. Yeah, and you sort of get that end onto this bit, yep. the, the long pole, if you will, and shove it yeah. <laughs> into the opening, and it just shoves through. Yeah. I think we, we actually have, uh, well, we do have on the Minerva, we actually have a video of this showing it, like, actually being done, which it's a little bit easier to see it being done than yes, trying to explain. Yes, I would suggest, it? really yeah. suggest watching yeah. that. You literally, either you see three different sizes, so whichever, you, you know, obviously, if you're doing a spaghetti strap like mum says you use a thinner one and anything bigger you know you'd use one of the yeah. two bigger sizes but you basically have a tube and then like a, a dowel or what looks a bit like a knitting needle yeah but they're yeah. a little bit different to be fair, yeah so you would literally just put the um the tube bit inside your tube of fabric yeah. and then like mum said it needs to be stitched at one end so the bit that's stitched at one end you then put the dowel sort of on that and you push it through the tube 
and out pops the other side your turned round piece of fabric. I mean, brilliant. It's so it's so clever, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Um. So I think you've got like, I think these are a little bit less fiddly than the loop turners. Yeah. Um, I have used one of those. Yeah, um, I have, and there's nothing wrong with those. Is that no, I think just my not. preference is this one, but I, you know, either do the job. I think it is just personal yeah. preference, really. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for spaghetti straps especially, that you know, you, you, you need a tool to be able to do it well. I think. Don't yeah. You? Um, and especially if you're doing anywhere. quite a few. Oh, yeah. guaranteed at least one would. Yeah, and they're, they're through, not expensive so tools either. No. So they're, they're well worth the you know the small investment yeah. to have them in you. Yeah, and you've got them forever then, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. So next question is from Carol, and Carol asks both of us. What is your favourite fabric to sew? To actually sew. Yeah, now that's different to your favourite fabric wearing. to wear, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, my favourite fabric to sew... Well, you go first. Because of just how easily it easily it sews, how beautiful it presses, would be like either a cotton lawn or a cotton sateen. So, and when I say cotton sateen, I mean like the non strip like our Minerva exclusive one. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. It's just, it, it just behaves so well. Yeah. Having said that, you know, it's not, you know, I, I do like to wear lots of knits and I do yeah. love sewing a knit. I mean, I I, I'm very lucky that I've got an overlocker. So it makes for a really quick, speedy project, which I'm often all so about. So many people are frightened of sewing knits. Yeah. I always um, really I like to encourage them, people to sew knits because yeah. they're just bad to sew. I find them easier. I really yeah. do. Yeah, they, Setting in sleeves um, is a dream. Yeah. With a knitted fabric, Yeah, I think. Yeah. Um, but then the other one I wanted to mention, which <laughs> I wish it, Carol's probably asking us for, for one fabric, isn't she? But yeah. I can't limit it to one. No, I can't. The only one I'll say is a viscose, you know, like a viscose chalet, because I love the drape on it and I love the kind of garment mm. that makes. But, you know, it's it it does slip and slide a bit. It's not as easy as like a, sewing a cotton sateen or a cotton lawn. So I guess technically to answer the question, I would say cotton sateen or cotton, cotton lawn. But I love viscose for its drape and I love knits because I just, because they're so easy, they're often very easy to sew and they're the kind of garments I like to wear a lot. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, go on, what would you say well, then? Um, I adore linen. Oh, I love wearing oh, linen. I forgot about linen. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness, because everything else you've mentioned, yeah. <laughs> you've said before me. Um, I, I adore linen. I yeah. love to wear it. I love to sew it. You wear it all year it round as well, don't you? Beautiful. It dries beautiful. It presses beautiful. <laughs> um, it handles so well. It can be a a bit of a nuisance with the fraying. Yeah. But yeah. if you know if if it if it is going to be um, a problem, then overlock or zigzag round your pieces. Yeah. Uh, there's always a way around it, isn't there? Yeah. Um, but. Would you believe up to recently, I have never in my life sewn with a uh, cotton sateen. Right. Never ever. So was it the Minerva exclusive range that like, you know, that sort of give you that kickstart to sewing? Um, and... It was, um, it was, but as you know, I made um, your dad a cotton sateen yeah. shirt for the event. The yeah. event we had in September. Um, and it washed like a dream. Mm -hmm. Um, I dried it in the tumble dryer and it dried perfectly. When I come to iron it, the iron just sailed mm. over it. Um, it's so satisfying getting that oh, crisp, isn't it? Was, it? The, it was perfection. beautiful. <laughs> and yeah, it was so, it was, there was a, I can't say it, a softness there. Yeah. Um, we, if you can't tell, I, we are huge fans of, the, of our cotton sateen, aren't we? It's, yeah. It's just a um, luxury in a fabric, isn't it? Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. It really, really was. Yeah. So I still haven't sewn anything for myself. <laughs> um, but yeah. Next on so the list, maybe. Yeah. Probably that. Well, no, I have to do the. Uh, I have a few cut out and ready to sew. So <laughs> next after yeah. That, next after that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right, so the next question is from Dee, and Dee asks, what is the best way of storing your pins? 
Now we do have a few options for that on the side. We, we do. We've got wrist pin cushions. We've got traditional little padded pin cushions. Um, but we both. Well, yeah. I mean, traditionally, people would have a box of pins. Yeah. Now, up to a few years ago, you're working on your table. You're cutting out. Boom. The pins <laughs> fall on the floor. The box of pins falls on the floor. They're all over the place. You're petrified in case that, well, in my case, if any of the small grandchildren come and there's a pin about. Um, or pets as well. Pets, yeah. yeah. So that was always a, a, a scary problem for me. Um, the thing that I've found now that I love is and the I magnetic. Too. We both use these, don't we? The magnetic dish. I yeah. think it's possibly one of them that you would pass on a site. Yeah. Or I think, oh, it's just some glorified gimmick. gimmick. Yeah. But um, it's literally like an oval dish in a way, isn't yeah. it? So you're not going to drop them on the floor because they just wouldn't come off. I'll, you know, if you do that, I'll show you in a tick, they do not come off. But say you did have some that you've just been working with and you've put them there. You then get your dish and they all go on there. As I said, they it? don't come off. Yeah. You know what I like it for as well? Like say if I'm, uh, you know, cutting a pattern out and or at the stage where I'm taking all the pins out when I've just cut a pattern out and I can kind of almost throw them on it. You know, I don't have to like sit there Think, and, and place yeah, them that's in. True. I don't have to push them into you know, anything. A cushion. Yeah, Just almost throw them on and it catches them, yeah. doesn't it? So yeah, that's our favourite yeah. little gadget. Isn't I it? mean, like you said, you mentioned the wrist ones. Uh, there is a magnet version of those yeah. as well. I think isn't there? Yeah, there is. Yeah. Um, I'm out on them. I, I don't uh, yeah. know. Some people love them, don't Absolutely they? Absolutely. And, and I them. get that they're really handy all the time. Yeah. You just get your own ways of of, of, of doing working, things. Don't don't you? Yeah. yeah. I yeah. I actually have one of these that's like on my cutting table. And just then, took <laughs> my line again. Yes. And then one of them that's next to my sewing Well, sort of, yeah, next to my sewing machine. Well, I can go stage four. All right. <laughs> and I have one, I have one on my, near my machine. Um, I have one near my overlocker. Not all got at once. I mean, I've staggered them over the years. Yeah. Um, so that's two near my sewing machines because they're set apart. I have another on my ironing board. Right, yeah. And I have another where I cut out. Ah, yeah. And when one gets empty, <laughs> I just swap it for the one near my sewing yeah. machine. Yeah. And off I go again. Yeah. I love them. Yeah. <laughs> love them. Yeah, you have, well, before then, you have a bit of an obsession with yeah. them, don't yeah. you? <laughs> and you can tell they've been bought at different times because they're all different colours. Yeah. Whoever had the... I have one, that one. But the others, I think, are just, yeah, more garish colours. But I love them. Yeah. Absolutely love them. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the next question is from Anastasia. And she asks, what fabric would you recommend for the Tilly in the Buttons Stevie tunic? I'm new to sewing. I wanted to try out this pattern as I've heard good things about their instructions. Well, firstly, you're right. Tilly in the Buttons uh, patterns are great for beginners. They're, they've literally got, you know, they're, they're award-winning sewing patterns with really easy to follow instructions and they always have the beginner in mind, don't they? So mm -hmm. they don't they don't take anything for granted that you'll know, you know, you just know mm -hmm. how to do something. They really sort of guide your hand throughout. And the Stevie pattern, um, their rate has been a good one for beginners. Um, like they have some patterns that are like for improvers or, or um, you know, intermediate level, but this one is a beginner pattern. Mm -hmm. So I would say it's been a great one to start with. Um, we'll insert a pat uh, the image of the of the pattern on the video so you can see it. But you in the pattern, so you've got like a tunic dress or a top. Um, they're both quite a boxy style with a grown on sleeve. Um, there's a patch pocket option or a little tie option or a button closure at the back. I mean, quite simple. Um, it's very it's, much like this at the top, isn't it? Yeah. Except it has a grown, um, um, sewn on band. Yeah, it does on one of them, or you can have it plain. Or you can well. have it plain yeah. like this, yeah. Yeah. The difference being a round neck as opposed to a V-neck. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, on the top, they're showing that um, with a little 
button like a button, loop. Yeah. Or a little tie. Or a little as tie well. on the dress, which yeah. Yeah, which could you, you could mm. do either on either, couldn't you? Yeah, I actually have this pattern at home. So I just think it'd be a really like nice, easy one to sew. Just yeah. do it in a lovely fabric. And um, yeah, be the sort of thing I'd get loads of wear out of, but I've still never made it. It's on the list to do. Um, so fabrics for it. So we've we've chosen four different options to show you. Two which are definitely very beginner friendly, and two that are um, you know a little bit more advanced. But you could maybe you know choose one of the the easier ones to start with, and then go on to you know one of the slightly more tricky fabrics to sew. But we've included these because there's more tricky ones because they are more drapey, and I think would be really lovely in mm -hmm. the in the stevie. So first of all, let's start with our um, it's our Minerva exclusive cotton sa cotton sateen fabric. Now. Now this one is our floral expression print. It's beautiful, isn't it? Oh, it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. Now, why I think this fabric is absolutely perfect for the Stevie, um, and if you're a beginner sewer, is one, it's 100% cotton, so it's lovely and stable. It's not gonna slip and slide around as you saw. Press is like an absolute dream. That's just said. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, just gorgeous fabric to work with. But crucially, it still has a little bit of softness. Yeah. And, and you know, a little bit of drape for a cotton fabric. So those shoulders are gonna hang really nice. Mm -hmm. The fact that it's a grown on sleeve, so you have a little bit of fabric here, yeah. that's gonna sit really well. Um, and you know, for either the top or the, or the dress option, it yeah. will be absolutely gorgeous. Comes in some really lovely prints. Um, and we also now as well, we've actually introduced a plain range into oh, our yeah. Minerva core range. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you want to play in fabric as well, we do have that option as well. Or a torn in one. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I know, you could oh, have had a few colours in that. You yeah, that you could pick it? out, isn't there? Yeah. Now the other fabric that we think is definitely, you know, sort of more at the very easy end. So this is again, another of our Minerva exclusive base class, and this is our linen and viscose blend. So this is our bubble light print. Oh. <laughs> it's just... Oh, it's fabulous, isn't it? It just springs out here, though, yeah. those colours, don't they? Yeah, and it's the, absolutely one of our best-selling prints, this one. Oh. I think if you, just, if you love colour, then this is a, a fabric for you, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Um, So this is one of your favourite fabrics to sew, isn't it? Yes. Linen and viscose. Yeah. So, again, we were conscious that because of the style, you need a fabric with a little bit of softness, mm. and the viscose brings the softness to this fabric. Yeah. If, if you were just working with 100% linen, I mean, you could for that pattern, but it's going to give a more stiff, structured kind of boxy yeah. look. Um, personally, I think a linen viscose for that pattern is is even lovelier because of that softness mm. that it brings. I'm just realising, I've seen this uh, print many times on the viscose. Yeah. And obviously the linen, I absolutely adore. It really, yeah. really is beautiful to sew. But I haven't, this is the first time I'm holding this is design it? on the linen. It's gorgeous, isn't it? <gasps> and so much is going through <laughs> my mind. <laughs> We, we, Next every, holiday. Every time we do this and we film these videos, we I both know. come away with like an extra thing on the yeah. sew list, don't I've we? I've seen it, you know, online, on our website yeah. so many times, but I have Some, held yeah. it. Sometimes you just, when oh. you see fabric again, you know, you... That. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> and everyone can wear this, I think, yeah. it's just so oh, bright and fantastic. Um, but yeah, wouldn't that be lovely for the for Stevie? You yeah, know? absolutely. Now, the next two fabrics we've got, these are both um, a little bit more tricky to sew with because they're drapey, um, but I still don't think out of the reach for a beginner. You know, you just maybe need a few more pins, take a little bit more time. So the first one is our uh, Minerva exclusive and it's our uh, Viscose Shelly fabric. Mm -hmm. And this is our Arcane Art print. I love this fabric. I love this print. It actually comes Those in four colours. colours. Oh, it's so cool, isn't it? Really are. Lovely. And, you know, when we, we've said many a time that, you know, wearing this goes, you can wear it all year round with an appropriate pattern. This is an appropriate yes. fabric because Absolutely. those are winter jewel colours. Yep. They, oh, the so, it's so Whereas rich, that's isn't maybe it? a little bit more summer, well, yeah. quite a bit more summer. I mean, I would, me. I would still wear bright colours in you winter You would, anyway. I wouldn't. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. But um, this, it's... Says me who's wearing cream, you know, um, <laughs> um, beginning of uh, November. But and I think, you know, again, back to that as well, like if you were, um, you know, say when it gets really cold, you know, you could just wear a cardigan with it yeah. or a little jumper over the top, yeah. you know, maybe pick out the black 
and you Absolutely, know it'll carry yeah. through even when it's really cold yeah. won't it um but yeah so this is um like i said it's a viscose chalet it's 100 percent viscose i mean you can see the incredible drape on that fabric when we hold it up yeah um so that's what makes it you know a little bit trickier to sew because it will slip and slide a little bit but because of the weight of this viscose, it doesn't slip and slide that much, does no. it? It's actually quite I've easy I've sold to quite a few times in it, haven't I? Yeah, you have. Yeah, yeah. You've made quite a few of your... My favourite top. Yeah, all the things, top. yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I've sold a few things with it. And, you know, I, the hardest thing, I think, is getting it lined up, getting it, you know, so that it's yeah. not... Yeah, so it's flat and on your cutting yeah, table. Yeah, yeah. But once um, you've done that, I find it quite... Yeah. reasonable yeah yeah it's just a little bit more difficult than yeah, the satin definitely. or the linen isn't it yeah. and you know because of that incredible drape for me for the, the stevie tunic that has these grown on sleeves and you know a slightly boxy oversized look like i would i love that pattern so mm -hmm. in something more drapey i just think it looks it just sort of dresses it up a little bit i mm -hmm. think yeah. um so yeah definitely one to consider and then the last fabric I've got, so this is one of our Minerva Core range fabrics, and this one is called Ocean Washed Stretch Woven Crepe. Ooh. So it's a crepe fabric, but it has some stretch. Oh, that's nice. It's lovely, isn't it? It's it's a relatively new fabric, this. S stretchy both ways. Stretchy to both ways, yeah. So oh, wow. um, let me just check. So on the width, it has 10% stretch, and down the length, it has 20% stretch. Wow. So it's quite unusual for crepe, isn't it, to stretch both ways? Yeah, I wonder if part of that downward stretch is because it's slightly rippled that way, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, like the texture works the across that way, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Oh, that's lovely. So it's 100% polyester, so it doesn't actually have any elastin and lightly colours in it. A, a lot of colours. A lot. Yeah, don't know how many exactly, but there's a lot of colours mm. in it. I chose this lovely khaki. It's one of my favourite yeah. colours, that, isn't it? So you could probably... Um, Tone it with something yeah. like that and make a coordinating outfit. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think what, I mean, hopefully this will come across on camera, but I think what makes this fabric special is that texture that my mum just spoke about. And, and it's called Ocean Washed. Mm. And it, I think it is quite a good description for it, isn't Very it? Very much, yeah. Um, it has a lived in, well, washed. Mm. Yeah, almost crink. It's not a crinkle. No, it's not crinkled, no. Um, it's just lovely. Yeah, it's just an all different, over, subtle texture, different, isn't yeah. it? Um, so I, I just think that would be lovely for the Stevie. I mean, it's certainly opaque. It's not see-through at all. And I mean, look at the drape on that. It's just, it's incredible, isn't it? Beautiful, <laughs> it, yeah. I think it would make a really dr a dressy, but you could wear it every day kind of Stevie mm. tunic. Yeah. I'm just looking at this. Um, the On the pattern itself, it says fabric suggestions um, light to medium weight woven fabrics such as linen, double gauze, chambray, cotton lawn, viscose. Yes. Um, if you're a confident stitcher, try a sand wash silk or crepe de chine. Yes. Why couldn't you make that in this? In a what loop would be to stop you, really? I don't think there'd be anything to stop you making it in a loop. I mean, there's, it. there's nothing that's, um, you know, it's very basic pieces. Yeah. Uh, basic shapes. Yeah. And it would be like a t-shirt dress. Yeah, yeah, it would, wouldn't it? I think this would be perfect because yeah. I, I looked at it and expected to see this on the ah, pattern. okay, yeah. I mean, yeah. to I me... I they made it as a woven fabric pattern. However. Yes, they And are. possibly an element of that is because they've taught it for beginners um, and the instructions throughout will be to sew it in a woven. But yeah. there's, there's nothing What's to see. easier than this? Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, very true. Yeah. And I mean, on the pattern... Um, the top does look like a um, a viscose chalice, doesn't it? Yeah, or maybe a cotton lawn, maybe. But that, to me, at first glance, looks like something yeah. like I think this. It's actually a linen factory, that sample got. Right. Yeah, but it could, it could be yeah, a Yeah, I can see a couple of little there. creases in it now. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. linen. But yeah, but, yeah. but yeah, it really would make it like a T-shirt dress or a... And the style uh, is so t-shirt dress. Yeah, yeah, definitely. definitely yeah. So that, yeah, as a reminder, that is our loop back Minerva exclusive. It's not yeah. French terry fabric, uh, but it would it would have enough weight to hold oh, it nicely yeah. as well, wouldn't it? Yeah. Mm. What am I going to sort mine in now? <laughs> <laughs> so next question, so last question for today. This is from Olga, and she says, quite simply, do I need to pre-wash my fabric? It's one of those how long is a piece of string uh, It is. Questions. I mean, quite simply, Everybody I Everybody has their own views, don't they? Yeah, I would always, well, not always, but I would 
99% of the time would say, yes, do it. Yeah. And the main reason for pre-washing a fabric is um, to get rid of any shrinkage, you know, if it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And yes, on, on uh, you know, say natural fibres, there's m- much more likely going to be a chance of shrinkage. But yeah. even on polyesters, sometimes, you know, or on synthetic fabrics, you can sometimes get some shrinkage. It's not yeah. nowhere near as yeah. often, but it can just depend, you know, sometimes like on a sweaty mitt, you can find it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if you do just pre-wash it, you know then. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is sometimes on a, on a wash, especially, you know, a machine wash, you can sometimes change the characteristic of the fabric slightly, you know, so it could make it a little bit softer. Um, it could, you know, if the fabric has any um, coating on it from the manufacturing process, you know, sometimes that they're designed to have those on that are supposed to wash away in the first wash. Yeah, and you've got to remember um, as well, you know, somebody might say, well, I don't want that finish to go away from it. It's going to go away when you wash it anyway. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, so um, you're just getting it to go away before you even start sewing yeah, it. Yeah. And I, I think something really worth mentioning is, you know, at the end of the day, all fabrics are made in a factory. Yeah. And you get dust. Yep. Yep. Um, and especially with linen, you know. Yeah, um, yeah linen as a, fa- a fibre. Flax, is it? Yeah, the flax, flax fibres, yeah. yeah. Um, and they, you know, as it's rolled onto the big rolls, um, that flax or whatever it's called has to settle somewhere yeah and it yeah. settles on the fabric as much as it settles anywhere else in the factory yeah of course it does yeah and so, by washing your fabric you know it's it just super it, super it? clean for want of a better word yeah. super fresh that's yeah. a better way of saying yeah. it yeah. Um, and you know, years ago, I never, I didn't used to wash anything. It never entered my head. And I once bought some um, linen trousers, and um, when I washed them and dried them, they'd shrunk, and mm. I was absolutely gutted because they were such a a good fit and blah blah yeah. blah. And something then the next time I was making something and because I never used to sew in linen much as I Mm. love it now I never used to do uh, because my mum always used to say oh it creases that stuff (laughs) and and now I love the fact that it creases but (laughs) hey ho um I was then making something in linen and I thought oh those trousers it never left my mind yeah and, uh, and I thought, oh, maybe if I wash my fabric first. Mm-hmm. So in my case, I did actually come up with the idea <laughs> myself, right. but a long while ago, as I said. Yeah. Um, and now, you know, I, I read many, many uh, comments on social media. Um, and so many people say, no, you don't need to wash it. I think you do. Yeah, it's it's just being on the safe side, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, you know, we we on the Minerva website, we recommend it. You know, on every fabric page, um, and it's you know it's the, the other thing as well to mention is you know however you are going to wash a fabric. I mean, good practice is always to test a sample first. Yes. Um, yes. You know, like for example, like on all our wools on the site, you know, yeah. they will all say hand wash because that's what the manufacturer recommends. And oh, but often they do it just to be on the safe side. Yeah. You know, sometimes you yeah. can machine wash a wool if you want to. Yeah. But you know, you, you would always test a sample first. Always in that case. Um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, sometimes, you know, a, a, like say a sweater knit or a loosen like woven or knitted fabric, you might look at it and think like, oh, you know, in a shop that would be hand wash. Yeah, and sometimes but, knitted, um, knitted fabric sometimes will shrink a little bit that way. Yeah. And grow. Grow that way. Yeah. Um, or it could be the other way around, but I think that's the most common, isn't it? Shrinking in length growing in width right okay and with that then you could end up with a a jumper that was up here with arms that were (laughs) out here you know yeah Um, yeah exactly so it's yeah i think just from a removing any coatings um removing the shrinkage from the fabric just freshening it up yeah and knowing the the characteristics you know from when you've washed it you know, then however you're dealing with it then, you know, you know that that's what it's going to be like. Yeah. I think for the sake of a wash, 
it's worth it. It is worth yeah. it. There are exceptions to every rule, as you've just uh, touched on. Yeah. Um, another one is something um, like a, a, is it an oil skin type fabric? Yes, no, you don't wash those. You do, do not you? wash that yeah. because that will wash away what's been put on yes. on purpose the to make it that, yeah. an oil skin. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, <laughs> you'd have to have it re-oiled then, which yeah. is a, a big process, so yeah. I believe. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to be doing um, that, do you? You know, and with those, even obviously once you've made the garment, you wouldn't be washing it anyway. No. You no. just wipe them clean. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, another that I'm, I'm out on, if you will, is fur. Okay. Um, I, I prefer to wash it, mm -hmm. but again, I would definitely do a sample. Yeah. yeah. I don't think you'd, depending, I think they usually acrylics or polyesters yeah, usually yeah um so i don't think you're going to get much shrinkage with them but because of all the fur i would love the freshness of it yeah um and i did one once wash something and when it came out of the washer uh, even though i'd only done it on a very um uh like a gentle coolish cycle. wash yeah the fibers were all flat when they came out mm, now i, I would have known yeah if I'd have washed a sample. But I then thought, well, what do I do with it now? I've, I'll have to, I'll just dry it in the tumble dryer and see what happens. And that brought it to life. Yeah. Do you yeah, remember I that? I do, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what else? Um, I think that's I mean, with, leather, leather look. Uh, no, um, I, I mean, with fabrics, like speciality yeah. fabrics like that on our site, we would say, it will either say wipe clean, dry clean, or uh, yeah. hand There's wash. always dry clean, yeah. isn't there? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So um, and, a, and a leather look, if it was a top or a skirt or something, a quick hand wash. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So, so but, but if you're going to change from the manufacturer, mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's always good to do a sample test anyway. But I think, if you, especially if you're going to change from what the manufacturing instructions say, then always do a test wash. Especially if you're going from like a hand, um, uh, you know, a hand wash instruction, and you're going to try it in the machine. Always, always, always do that. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, going back to your linen trousers as well. You know, in the sort of you know, do I do I not pre wash my? And I get it that especially if you've just got some fabric as well, and you're so excited to sew yeah. it, it's like oh, I have to wait for it to wash and dry. I get the annoyance with that. But the way I always think about it is, you know, as sewers, sewists, mm -hmm. we can, you know, we can avoid that issue that you get with, with a uh, boat ready to wear clothing. Yeah. You know, you go That's into a shop. Thing. Yeah. And I mean, the, uh, you know, we both do buy ready to wear as well sometimes. So, yeah. Yeah. And so many times when I do, it's one of my biggest bugbears yeah. because, you know, I, I, I wash things carefully, relatively carefully anyway. <laughs> And everything, so many things shrink, and it really bugs me. I just think, you know, after after a couple of washes, it then feels like, you know, it's a size too small. I can't wear it. It's just such a waste. Mm. And I, I can't stand waste. I like never that. buy anything made in linen. Never. No. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. Viscose, I think, is another one. Like, I've, for whatever reason, yeah. I've had bad experiences with viscose. I am terrible. Um, My downfall is putting everything in the. Uh, I, I I I wash on woolen washes, etc. Yeah. But I am. You put everything in the tumble dryer. I do put everything it? in the tumble dryer. Um, it calls back to when you were little and I had, I had everybody's jeans in the family. Um, everybody's on the line drying, um, and somebody pinched them all. Oh. Everyone, <laughs> and and I've always been frightened of <laughs> hanging washing out. Right, okay. I yeah. hang towels out, but I, then again, I like towels. I do. <laughs> yeah, you get used to do things oh. a certain way, don't you? But yeah, I'm digressing think... here. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I just think you know the fact that we have that option to make sure that it's not going to shrink once we've sewn up and put all that time and love and care into making something for the sake of a, you know a few hours. I think it's worth doing. But yeah. you know, that's our view on it. Let us know in the comments what you think on that because I'd be interested to see how many people yeah. do pre-wash and how many don't. Yeah. I um, usually I'll I'll come home, put it straight in the washer, um, start making the tea, then if I've time, cut the pattern out, you know, have a cup of tea, watch whatever on the telly, meanwhile dry it, and then it's and ready for cutting out. Yeah, that's a good way of looking at it, isn't it? Yeah. Get your pattern prepped in the yep. time that it's pre-washing, yep. yeah. <laughs>
So that's all the questions we have for today. So I hope you found that interesting and inspiring. Uh, and hopefully those questions have helped, you know, a few people out. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching. And um, do leave a comment below with more questions for us next time. Um, you know, you guys send us in the questions. Like I say, you can leave it um, as a comment on this video. You can send them on social media, post them on Minerva, um, you know, send them in via email. Um, you know, any which way you want to send them to us, that's fine. And that just keeps us going with new questions to answer and um, so we can continue this series for you. So yeah, please do send you, your questions in. Uh, thank you to everyone that has done so far. I also just wanted to say a special, a really, well, a huge, huge thank you to everybody that came to the Minerva event celebrating our 25th anniversary. Yeah, it was amazing, wasn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely amazing. We, I, I could tear up thinking about it. Yeah. Both yeah. the sh the pop up shop during the day and the party at night. I mean, they were just they were just wonderful. Everybody they? got on so well. Yeah, and just we got on with everybody. Yeah, Fantastic. seeing everybody in the handmade Thank garments. You. you know, just being able to chat, <laughs> spend a day chatting to people about chatting sewing, about sewing and fabric. I mean, what could be better? Yeah. It was it was wonderful, yeah. wasn't it? And thank Absolutely. you so so much to everyone yeah. that came. Thank you. thank you to everyone that part participated online as well. Um, yeah, it was wonderful and hopefully we'll be able to do it again in the future. Uh, yeah, I just want to say a huge, huge thank you for that because we, we're still a little bit like overwhelmed, aren't we? And, yeah, we uh, haven't come down off no. that. <laughs> We're still Level. like basking in the glow of it all, aren't we? And, yeah. Uh, oh, it was just wonderful. So thank you so much. Yeah. And um, so yeah, we'll be back again next month with uh, another sewing Q and A video. So do keep sending those questions in, and we'll see you again soon.